我们的节目经常有我跟著名科学家对话。最近，世界顶尖科学家协会与字节跳动帮我联系到了一位诺贝尔奖获得者。更有趣的是，他还是位诺贝尔奖双冠王。这并不是说他得了两次诺贝尔奖，像居里夫人那样，而是说他得了一次正牌的诺贝尔奖和一次搞笑的诺贝尔奖。他得到正牌的诺贝尔奖是因为制备出二维材料石墨烯，得到搞笑诺贝尔奖是因为磁悬浮青蛙。这位好奇心和成就同样卓著的科学家，就是英国曼彻斯特大学教授安德烈·盖姆。下面我就来和盖姆教授连线，谈谈他的研究经历以及他想对中国人民说的话。So first, let me introduce myself to you a little bit.、Uh, I am Lan Fengyuan. I am from the、uh, uh, University of Science and Technology of China, USTC. In chemistry. Yes, yes. Hello, everyone. My name is Andrei Gaim. I happened to get、uh, a Nobel Prize ten years ago, so today is my interview with you, and I'm happy to be here. So、uh, it's very nice to meet you. So actually, my first question is about your family name. So how to pronounce that? Gaim. Gaim. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so it would be it would be、uh, confusing to say Heim or Jim or Kevin. Actually, it's Guy. Okay, thank you. So、uh, now the、uh, first、uh, uh, actual question that、uh, is about、uh, uh, graphene. So we know that、uh, graphite is a, a kind of、uh, material that we have、uh, no structure in our middle school. But、uh, the single layer of uh, of uh, graphite, namely graphene, has not been made until your work. So how did you get this idea to make graphene? And how do you get this idea to Make graphene by hearing tapes.、Uh, at the time we, I started this research, I was looking around what interesting subject could be. I moved to a new place from、uh, the Netherlands to UK, and I was looking for、uh, for a new subject. At that time, I there was very popular carbon nanotubes and so on, and I thought.、Uh, um, Uh, graphite seems to be an interesting material.、Uh, no one ever studied、uh, thin films of graphite because it was impossible、uh, to make those films before. Maybe we can make something similar to carbon nanotube, making very thin films of graphite. So、uh, I had a PhD project with one Chinese、uh, student and.、Uh-huh. Uh, We, yeah, his name、uh, um, uh, is now a professor in Shanghai, and、uh, together with him we started this project, and eventually we made thinner and thinner films of graphite, and eventually went down to a single layer, which is now known as graphene. That's a simple story. That's an amazing story. Your work made a huge impact. And now the graphene industry has become very large. But、uh, however, there is such a thought that uh, uh, this industry still lacks a cooler application. How do you think about this idea? When we are talking about graphene, it's not about applications. It's basically about new knowledge which this material brought. Absolutely, to yes, yes.、So、I totally agree. <laughs> Price not for making a company or something like that. I got it. Yes, yes, I totally agree. The physics which was discovered there. So if you look around us, everything around us is three dimensional. It has thickness, it has length, it has width. You won't find materials around us which are one atom or one molecule thick. And this was the mentality of the human race. Of scientists, of everyone, we believe material yes, which are one atom thick couldn't possibly exist in nature. And、uh, a very powerful laws of physics forbid those materials. And our experience as well. For example, if you try to make a thin film of gold, it would melt at room temperature. If you try to make thin film of aluminum or、mm-hmm. of、uh, Iron, it would oxidize and completely destroy. So there was no kind of knowledge that these materials can possibly exist. So graphene、yes. was the first material that、mm-hmm. proved that one atom and one molecule thick materials exist. 
but now we got dozens and hundreds of those materials investigated around the world. That's what Graphene brought us, a I whole see. group of new materials which can be investigated and then used in applications. This is the first major thing. The second major thing due to Graphene was uh, uh, everyone thinks you take graphite, make a small piece uh, out of this one, and it would basically have in the properties of the parent material. And graphene proves that properties of a small part of something are completely different from the properties of its parent. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's much rich and much strong piece that graphene is very difficult from its parent graphite. And the same refers to other materials which are systems and brothers of graphene. I got it. So um, the major uh, importance of graphene, not uh, the material itself, but it opens the area of two-dimensional uh, materials, right? Correct. It's open and new, a new era in the materials. You know, the human race follows the development of materials from Stone Age to Bronze Age to Iron Age to currently age of silicon and plastics. So I believe we are entering, or at least partly entering, into the age of two-dimensional materials, which are uh, were completely unknown to us until until 15 years ago. We didn't even suspect that this kind of materials could exist. People usually just say the, the usage of graphene. It can be used as a, as a conducting material or used as a super hard material. But uh, actually, the basic importance, the most important uh, thing about that in science is, uh, is that uh, it's a two-dimensional material, and which, which was uh, absent completely before that. So this, this is truly amazing. So uh, about so about the future of uh, graphing and uh, carbon-based uh, semiconductors. So for example, uh, some Chinese uh, uh, group published the paper in Science in, uh, in this May. They uh, for the first time they make a, uh, they made a, a carbon metal tube uh, transistor, uh, which uh, had a better performance than the uh, silicon uh, transistor. So how do you think about that, the future of the carbon-based semiconductors? It's an important development by, by the group you mentioned. By, I know the physical work, but uh, if you look uh, more broad about this at, at the current stage, we're just trying to replicate what we all already know with using new materials. We know that silicon makes uh, very powerful silicon chips which, uh, which power our computers, our mobile phones, and so on. So using the materials like fracking or carbon nanotubes, we try to replicate to improve properties of the existing technology. I think it's much more broader than this one because what we are doing here is it's a very first understandable for carbon-based technology because uh, uh, we have limited imagination. We try to improve what we have. Yes, yes. So I got that. So this question is actually much uh, much smaller than your picture. So your picture is a truly important thing. So it's a truly amazing thing is they are there of doing research. So uh, so you are keeping this research just from the beginning of the of your career. That, uh, uh, you, you are doing some, some other very interesting thing. For example, you got uh, another Nobel Prize, uh, the Yig Nobel Prize of the magnetically uh, elevating a frog, right? Yeah, the, yeah. The, the, this, is, this looks hilarious, but uh, you can, uh, can also think about you can also uh, magnetically elevate a human, something like that. How do you, see, uh, how do you get the idea of that? And uh, how, how, is, how is the future of this <laughs> research? So uh, during my career, I tried to do unexpected Okay, some things where other people haven't worked, uh, at least, uh, not much development. Been. So about 25 years ago, I decided to look at the poorly understood subject of magnetic water. So what happened with water? And to my own surprise, <laughs> and more importantly to surprise of all my colleagues who 
work professionally with high magnetic fields for all their lives, the water was not ended up on the floor. It's levitated inside, inside the magnet. Uh, it took five minutes to, for me to understand that it's not an anti-gravity machine, that it's nothing like that. And phenomena behind this is actually quite well known for hundred years. It's magnetism, diamagnetism. For example, you and me are a little bit magnetic. We don't feel this, but when we put in magnetic field, we become like a small magnets, and not so small, actually. Magnets depend on magnetic field, but everyone, including professionals, thought that it's tiny phenomena. It's, it would be used only in kind of very special environment and so on. But uh, um, it turns out that fields which are routinely available um, in a uh, in many labs around the world and were available before me for uh, half a century. No one has done this simple experiment of putting uh, normal substances inside strong magnetic field. I put water, but then uh, I have beautiful videos of anything from strawberries to, to uh, to tomatoes, to anything else levitating in magnetic field, and uh, this was uh, this was a shocking experience even for professionals. And eventually, how to illustrate this? You have this uh, uh, science popular program. If you, it would be one thing to say levitate water or plastic, it would sound a little bit scientific. So I decided to make an explanation mark, okay, and put a small frog inside this, and frog also levitated. If frogs can fly, everything can fly, including humans. So that was the point. And about Ig Nobel Prize, you, uh, when I was asked whether I'm, I, I would like to receive it or not, because people do not harm uh, have professional careers, okay? I'm glad that I was adventurous enough to say, yes, dare to accept this prize because, yeah, I can take uh, jokes about myself. So this is not only a joke, it's actually a very important uh, uh, physics test. The, uh, the, uh, did you say that you just uh, magnetically elevated uh, water? The, uh, the, the, uh, the frog and the human can be... Uh, uh, magnetically elevated because we have water in our body? Yeah, humans can be levitated, it would require very big magnets, but I don't think there is a point about the, about the, uh, doing this one. The most important was, okay, uh, not, not new knowledge, it was not new knowledge, it was right, new right. conception of, mm -hmm. uh, of uh, environment of the strength magnetic field and this knowledge uh, comes uh, into different areas of expertise. I, I have seen uh, people who by a physicist who studied say mosquitoes flying in magnetic field and they never could understood uh, why mosquitoes kind of try to orient the cells along the magnetic field because they didn't appreciate uh, uh, the strength of magnetic field. Yes, I see. The, uh, it seems to me that uh, yours there is very different from uh, most of the scientists. Most scientists would uh, look at uh, new phenomena from some very bizarre uh, materials. For example, the uh, uh, quantum power effect. Uh, it's also under very, very high uh, magnetic field. But he's about some uh, very special structure, but uh, special material. But you are using a frog <laughs> and uh, just the water, so it's a very, very popular uh, material. So, this, uh, the, your theory is to uh, find a new phenomena from some um, material that we are very familiar <laughs> like uh, graphite, uh, like uh, frog. So, this, this is uh, truly amazing. It seems uh, that. Uh, there are so many secrets of the uh, universe, but it's, 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 they are just around us. But we, we should look at more of these. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yes, correct. Yeah. So science usually develops in small steps along certain direction. People 
people gradually develop knowledge and suddenly they find something new along this road. So this is one way of doing things. I'm doing it differently. I try to jump into a subject suddenly into a completely new area rather than gradually develop my own research area, hoping that somewhere there along this road there is something interesting. I, I jumped into unknown territory. I'm hoping to find something interesting there. At least it's fun.